after hearing Dr. Laverne have an even tougher job to, to convince you that cancer is important and present in the US. <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about the orthopedic surgery implications of breast cancer. I wanna thank the Florida Orthopedic Society for allowing us to present our study. And I want to thank <clears throat> my co-authors, Dr. Letson and Dr. Hackpur from the Moffitt Cancer Center, Dr. Mont from the Rubin Institute in Baltimore, and Dr. Lucci from MD Anderson in Houston. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women. According to the World Health Organization in the, in the year 2007, last year, more than 1.2 million people, men and women, were diagnosed with breast cancer. Half a million of these patients died, and in the U.S., the country with the highest incidence of breast cancer in the world, 180,000 people died of this condition. Florida has the fourth highest incidence of breast cancer in the country, and has the second highest incidence of mortality due to breast cancer in the country. <clears throat> the only one that beats Florida in mortality is California. The map of the U.S. to the high right, everything that you see white or yellow um, means that um, breast cancer has a higher incidence than any coronary event, heart attacks, angina. The only places in the U.S. that have a higher incidence of heart conditions than breast cancer are the ones in green. And the world map, just to show that um, the countries in pink are the countries with the highest incidence of breast cancer in the world, more than 100 cases per 100,000 people, the U.S. is the highest in the world. Most of the new um, treatment modalities have increased patient survival, but the metastatic complications of breast cancer are still common, and if patients live longer, there's a higher risk to present with metastasis. Once a patient has metastasis, 80% of these patients will have skeletal compromise due to breast cancer. The mean survival of patients of breast cancer with bone metastasis is three years. There are several complications that are due only to the bone compromise pathologic fractures, pain, disability, spinal cord compression, and um, the medical results of the bone compromise, anemia, and hypercalcemia. Cancer in the U.S. is treated usually by multidisciplinary teams. Physicians from several specialties come together and decide the best treatment options for patients. Um, there are no orthopedic surgeons ever involved in patients with breast cancer, and um, most of the skeletal complications are managed by orthopedic surgeons in the community that are not part of these big cancer centers that see the patient with breast cancer. In our study, we defined roles for orthopedic surgeons. We came up with five roles. This study is going to be published in June in the Expert Review of Anti-Cancer Therapy, <clears throat> and we came up with five roles that the orthopedic surgeon has. The first four are pretty straightforward, and we all are aware of it. Um, prophylactic fixation, fix. Um, an impending pathologic fracture. <clears throat> Reconstruct the bone or the joint after the event of a fracture. Decompress the spinal cord, maintaining the stability of the spine. Um, treat the bone metastases that are refractive to radiation therapy and that are still painful after radiation. And the fifth point, one of the most important that we are not really aware of is the, to be an aid in early diagnosis of breast cancer. As we all know, most of the bone metastases occur first in the actual skeleton. The next most common sites of metastasis is the femur and the humerus. And 20% of patients that are diagnosed each year in the United States are diagnosed because an orthopedic surgeon referred the patient after having bone complaints or a physician in the community. Bone complaints was the reason that caused the diagnosis of breast cancer in these patients. We combined uh, more than 15,000 patients using databases at Moffitt and at MD Anderson over 20 years, there were only 990 patients that had microscopic confirmation of a fracture due to breast cancer. 25% <clears throat> of these patients had a single bone metastasis and the rest had multiple bones involved. Regarding the diagnosis of bone metastasis, <clears throat> the lesions are visible on x-rays um, after 30 to 50% of the bone mineral is lost. In case of osteolytic bone metastasis, a bone scan can um, find these lesions several months before the x-rays. The bone scan is currently the first method of, um, to diagnose this bone metastasis. It has a limited specific, uh, specificity, as we all know. It's highly sensitive, and it gives us the advantage of scanning the entire skeleton. Just an example of uh, multiple bone metastasis in a patient with breast cancer. The CT scan gives us a higher resolution. <clears throat> it's more sensitive and more specific than the bone scan, but the main limitation is that it does not scan the entire skeleton. Several authors have published that we need a CT scan to stage patients, so just by increasing the field that we expose the patient for a CT scan, we might be able to avoid using a bone scan, but we still use a bone scan, and most of the big cancer centers in the country still use a bone, uh, bone scan as the primary method of diagnosis. The PET scan um, um, has also several published studies showing that um, by monitoring the increased glucose metabolism, you are able to uh, find and define um, signs of metastasis before an actual morphologic change in the bone. Um, it's 
highly sensitive uh, specificity is um, 75 77 <clears> percent <throat> if the bone is sclerotic it has a very low um, rate of detection that's the main drawback it has a high rate of false positives and it's extremely expensive but it gives amazing images even of local recurrences of the tumor in the breast in addition to the bone metastasis it's a pretty useful tool so the treatment of bone metastasis as we already heard in, in the previous talk these phosphonates have been proven to to improve pain by um, inducing osteoclast apoptosis. Radiation is a very effective treatment option in patients with breast cancer <clears throat> and the prophylactic fixation of impending fractures before radi radiation therapy. This is one point that we stressed in our study. This is a patient that was treated in the, in the community <clears throat> with an um, osteolytic defect in the distal femur that was extremely painful, mechanical type of pain. The patient was worked up at the outside institution with several studies, bone scan, MRI, CT scan, um, even a biopsy was attempted, and all the workup before referring the patient to a big cancer center was made. During transport, the patient had a fracture of the lesion. We stressed the point to fixate impending pathologic fractures before attempting radiation, before attempting staging, before attempting anything else. This is a very straightforward um, classification described by Dr. Murrell. Um, he assigned one, two, two and, and three points to several variables, and um, if we apply this to our patient that had a score of, of 11, had enough criteria to um, move forward with a, a prophylactic fixation. When we talk about surgical um, management of these metastases, um, load bearing versus load sharing are terms that are frequently described. If the lesions are present in the lower extremities, um, I am nailing are usually um, used. Um, the bone defects can be augmented with the use of cement and plates are used especially in upper extremities, the forearm specifically, and they're also augmented with cement. Just some x-ray showing management of lower extremity metastasis, this fractured humerus with a plate. Um, these are fluoroscopic images of um, augmentation with cement in the side of the metastasis and a gamma nail for prophylactic fixation, well, the fixation of the fracture. At Moffitt, we use um, long femoral stems. However, uh, most of the studies um, have showed that um, since most of these fractures are dealt, are managed in the community, short procedures, less blood loss associated with the use of short femoral stems could benefit patients that have very um, limited survival, that have severe comorbidities, and that will benefit with a shorter procedure with short femoral stems. Um, the um, advent of, of segmental endoprosthesis have allowed the orthopedic surgeon to have an additional tool to treat ex uh, extensive bone loss um, that could not have been treated with other existing methods and to treat um, and revise failed um, fixation with nails or plates. Uh, intraoperative picture, this patient had failed radiation, uh, three cycles of radiation failed with complaining of severe pain. We offered her a, a, a total femur. <coughs> and she was able to live the rest of his life without pain. The main conclusions of our study, in contrast with primary sarcomas where an orthopedic surgeon is the chief of the multidisciplinary team and is the one guiding the decisions, there is no input from orthopedic surgeons for the treatment of patients with breast cancer. Metastatic disease to a skeleton is frequent, is a problem. It correlates with prognosis. Um, most of the metastatic disease is dealt with at, in the community. And we believe that orthopedic surgeons should be familiar at least with the diagnosis, treatment of breast cancer, since it specifically correlates with prognosis of these women and men. <clears throat> Another important part of our study that started a new study is that several orthopedic common procedures are affected by treatment of breast cancer. Sentinel lymph node dissection, radical axillary dissections, mastectomies have an effect in carpal tunnel surgeries in distorradial fractures. And we as orthopedic surgeons are not aware of these complications associated with the management of breast cancer. So just again, to repeat the five roles of orthopedic surgeon, the aid in diagnosis, again, 20%, that's 40,000 men and women were diagnosed because an orthopedic surgeon or somebody in the community, a primary care physician, um, marked the patient with a sign of alert because was complaining of of, um, of pain or a fracture without a, an important trauma preceding the event. Thank you.